Up inside of Unity, we're going to, well, take a look at what I worked on last night. Again, had a very long late night. I'm going to show you what we've made. Things are looking very much like Bioshock, which is pretty cool. And also, we're going to figure out how to make proper sound effects for throwable objects. And we're going to, this is going to be the funnest part, we're going to see how quickly we can create a killer clown with a shotgun. Hopefully, we can just repurpose stuff and it'll work. So let's jump into Unity. Now, before we do that, I did want to say thank you so much to Ian Unt and Justin Doyle. Guys, these are new students to full-time game dev. Full-time game dev is my massive premium program. It's going to take you more than two months to finish this program. And you're going to learn everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games. There are just two coupon codes left, two left to join the program for 50% off. And the best part is guys, you're going to get 2d art pro, which is my massive program about how I do 2d art, how you can too. You're also going to get a free program called stream my game, which is how to reach out to uh, streamers and YouTubers and how to get them to play your game. There's actually a method that I've used to get Jacksepticeye, Matt Pat, Game Grumps, even PewDiePie to play games that I've worked on. You're also gonna get a course called Easy 3D as well and a free t-shirt, which honestly looks pretty awesome. So be sure to click below if you wanna join the program. You'll also get a shout out tomorrow. Um, guys, this does support the development of Father. Um, it supports this channel, which is huge. Without you guys, I wouldn't be working on Father. Seriously, I wouldn't be working on this game and I wouldn't be working with Felipe. I have a team to pay and this definitely helps alongside my game sales, okay? So just full disclosure, it helps me out, but more importantly, it does help you out because you're gonna learn 2D and 3D art tutorials, you're gonna learn how to do C Sharp, you're gonna learn Unity, you're gonna learn how to secure funding from publishers, how to secure funding from Kickstarter. And some of you might wonder, well, why should you tell us how to do this? It's because I've done it, I've done it multiple times. This is my job, I know how to do this, I'm very good at this, and I teach people how to do it. And by the way, if you're a student, let me know in the chat and I'll say hello to you on the other side, okay? So click below if you're interested. All right, let's jump inside of Unity, let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Woo! So we have done a lot of work. The first thing I want to show you is the enemies, okay? I want to show you them jumping around. They can jump on surfaces now, which is pretty awesome. And I got them to properly rotate. They weren't rotating properly when they jumped to you. So let me show you that really quick. And by the way, if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat and I will say hello to you back. Um, let's, oops, jump inside of Unity here. And I'm gonna hit play here. Actually, let's turn on the sound for you. It's a little loud, sorry. All right, so we have our enemies. They work great. We've got baked lighting, looks good. All right, and he can now jump in on top of platforms and he rotates properly, which is awesome. This is a big deal. This really helps the game be a little bit more challenging, a lot more challenging, because I can't just hide from enemies, right? <laughs> That's kind of funny, but I like it, you know? Also, we have a now have a headshot animation, just like that. So overall, guys, things are looking awesome. They're really, really looking awesome. Last night, I wanna show you really quickly. Last night, I was able to work on the intro scene, all right? So it's called level one. There it is, level one R2. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. Hello, Elijah, Estev, Gage, Derek, Chris Palazos, guys, Chris Palazos has been pivotal in creating some really awesome music for this game. So feel free to say hello to Chris in the chat. All right, so what we've got, I'm just gonna sort of scroll through the scene here. Um, I've done a little bit of work. I told you I wasn't gonna do this, but I did end up doing it. Um, we have a new sequence, and I've just done some dialogue really quick. Uh, just recorded my voice yesterday just to get a good feeling. So if I hit play here All 
Okay, so really quickly here, this is all very generic blocking, all right? Even the platform I'm on is gonna be replaced with a ferry or a boat, okay? So just keep that in mind, very generic, but it's pretty simple what we want the player to do. We want them to walk into Happy Hotel, right? We ask that you keep your hands and feet away from the railings and watch your step as you exit the boat. Hold on tight to your velvet ticket. Be sure to present it at the entrance. May you reach the top and win the covenant. All right, so that's gonna be a ferry. This is gonna be a dock, okay? We've got the water looking fine. It's not the best, but it looks fine, right? Um, but you just make your way up this beach, right? Kind of like D-Day, huh? <laughs> we go over here first, just grab our ax. So all of this is gonna be set dressed. Trees, grass, fences, lighting. Right now, this is just the very simple blocking. I'm gonna make our way up to a happy hotel here. This will all be fenced in. You'll have to go through here to open up this gate. So let me show you the gate. So that's the gate that's gonna be blocking us, right? Can't get through, right? There'll be fences right here. We just make our way through a cemetery. There's gonna be tombstones. Maybe a couple spiders, I'm not sure. And then there'll be a switch here on a pedestal. Fence goes down, make our way back. Jonathan says, hey Thomas, I'm one of your students. I'm still in the early stages, but I love how beginner friendly your 2D and 3D courses are. Thank you, that's awesome. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for supporting the channel, supporting this game's development, but more importantly, supporting your future. I think that's really awesome that you're taking that step. Locked door over here, right? This is gonna be a huge open gate or a big, like beautiful ornate foyer area or porch area. But I love this shot, that's so cool. Music starts playing. All right. So that's gonna be a golden ticket, all right? It's currently keys. We're changing it to tickets. Felipe's doing that right now. And you enter and load into the new level. So that's our intro sequence. We don't wanna be outside for very long because this game is all based in this giant hotel tower, okay? So that that's what we worked on yesterday. There's nothing left to do for this scene except once Felipe's ready with all of his props and his architecture that he's working on, he'll come into the scene, set dress it, and we'll, we'll set dress it together, but Felipe will do a good chunk of it. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do here is let's go inside of our demo scene, which, let's see here, is right here. <clears throat> this is what we were looking at previously. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that these glasses have the right sound. Okay, so if I hit play here. Okay, these glasses, they have the wrong sound. Sounds like it's breaking. I don't like it. <clears throat> so just the falling sound is not good enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to artlist.io. And let's go ahead and find a bottle hit sound. Let's see if there's a couple sounds. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> that's all we need. We're gonna have three of those, okay? So let's go ahead and download those sounds. And how many of you know the audio software we're gonna be using to open this up? Can I get a, a poll? What do you think, and we're gonna use a free one, what free audio source are we gonna use to make these sounds, all right? We're gonna combine, well, we're not gonna combine, we're gonna cut these into three separate sounds. That's right, Tyler Goodwin audacity and by the way those of you just joining us just remember that you can utilize the two remaining promo codes left below to join my premium program i'm going to take you a couple months to figure this out it might even take you longer to do the course be sure to check it out below if you're interested it really is a great course i could say that after two years of running this course 3,000 students worldwide it's an awesome course you're going to learn a ton i wish i had taken a course like that when i was starting out
Okay, so here we go. I think it should be a little bit higher pitched. But remember guys, who knows the volume that we're gonna be shooting for here? What's the volume? What do we want? We want it between negative 12 and negative six. Hello games with Freddie, how are you doing? Export as a wave, and we're just gonna call this glass hit one, okay? Now, it's not really glass, is it? It's really a bottle. So let's make sure we go to Unity and change it. I actually even think, I think we need a new, a new tag. It's gonna be a pain in the butt, but we're gonna call this bottle. We're gonna, can we move it? We can't move it. Let's tag these all as bottle. I think that they're just, they just don't sound right. They sound weird. Um, so I wanna select the freaking bottle. Come on, Unity. Um, and we're gonna tag it as not glass, but bottle. Okay. There it is. <clears throat> There's one. We're gonna tag this one as bottle. Guys, without the tag, we don't know what the sound is gonna be, okay? Freaking Unity. I wanna select this and just leave me alone. Okay, bottle, good. And then one more over here. Bottle. And then why don't we just do this glass as bottle as well? Why not? It's gonna make the same kind of sound. So that's okay. All right. Now let's go to our glass hit sound. And we're gonna call this, um, let's double check here. Yeah, this is gonna be called bottle hit. All right, what we wanna do is we want a variety of sounds here, okay? So let's just go to this here and we're gonna bring in this new one. Okay, that's good, fade it out. And then make sure it's between negative 12 and negative six. Why, why? Yep, it is, good. We're gonna export it as a wave. This is gonna be bottle hit two, and then let's just increase the pitch here, and that'll be enough. So we got a variety of sounds here. Export as a wave, uh, and all really sometimes, the only reason you have a variety of sounds is not to make your game cool or seem premium, it's just you don't want a lot of repetitive sounds. You want to when you're hitting the bottle, okay? Because I'm gonna have enemies running along this counter and I don't want them to all have the same sound when hitting the bottle. The next thing we wanna do, we wanna make sure we go to our player controller. Inside the player controller, we have something called effects manager and it's all of our different effects. Um, if I can find it, there it is. All of our different effects. So there it is, player SFX. So it's not really called player effects manager, it's called player SFX. And by the way guys, if you haven't subscribed or hit the like button or left a comment below after you watch the video or just participated in the chat, be sure to do that, okay? It's really good to participate, especially if you're wanting to make games because it's a lonely endeavor. It really is lonely at times. Okay, so we're gonna create a new series of sounds. It's in this array here. Um, so let's see if we can find any. Nope, this is the wrong script. It's not called player SFX, it's called, I, I told you it was called this, Impact Effect Manager. This manages all the different surfaces. When you hit something with an ax, when you hit an enemy, when you hit um, like marble or stone, you want all of these different sounds to play, okay? So I'm gonna create a new sound. It's gonna be called Bottle Hit Sound. And all we gotta do is create a new if then statement down here, all right? I know it sounds like a mess, but it's, it's really not that bad. It's, I mean, it's, it only happens once. So when, when you hit a sound, it runs through this list here. Um, so it's just looking for the tag. So in this case, we're gonna put it here. And this is gonna be bottle. If the tag is bottle, then the decal is, <sighs> glass hit decal's fine. Um, then we're gonna play, which sound is it? It's gonna be bottle hit sound, right? And then we gotta just make sure it's doing a random decision between the three. Generic hit particles is fine. 
Let's go back into Unity here, and all we've got to do is now drag in those three sounds into the array from our project window, and then we're good to go, okay? So what I need to do is select my, not, not my bottle, but the actual character controller, go to our Impact Effect Manager, and there is a bottle hit sound right here now. And now all I gotta do is just drag in those three, right? Bottle hit, hit one, chew, and tree, and then hit play. Ready? Let's kill you really quick. All right, let's make sure you guys can hear the sounds pretty good. It can be pretty loud, but I just want you to be able to hear it. Yep, you can barely hear it. Okay, I feel like it needs to be louder. Um, I don't know, let's see here, the sound volume. Ah, yes, so we can change the volume, um, which is going to be sound volume. Sound volume equals, we're gonna do 1.5. Um, that should be good. It's originally getting set to 0 0.8, I think 1.5, because this one's pretty quiet. It, it, may, it may just be a frequency thing because we did between negative six and negative 12 dB. So I don't know why we're not hearing it very well, but let's try one. It breaks, good, let's try it. Look at those labels that Felipe made. Isn't that awesome? He did a really good job. Perfect. That sounds great. I think it should be louder, honestly. So let's just do two and call it a day. I think we did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? Moby says, wow, the game is looking incredible, Thomas. Moby, you can just, oh. Every time you talk, you say something rude. Label. Sounds great. So what we're gonna do, by the way, guys, with these carryable objects is I wanna be able to hold them and read the label. So like if I have a big book and I wanna read like the pages, it'll come close to my face. Interestingly enough, we can take this bottle here. I just wanna show you really quick and even test it out because I'm not even sure. But like if we go to the pushable object script, this is the object that allows us to pick it up. The object holding offset, we can set it to like 0.2, all right? And it's gonna get really close to my face so I can read it. So let's try it out. That one, not so much. No, it didn't work. Dang it. I don't know why. Whoa. Um, or did it work? I don't know. Um, object holding offset is 0.2. I wonder if you could set it to like negative two. I'm gonna delete these really quick. I just wanna test this out because it's gonna allow us to create a big fun story if it works. Anytime you can do world building, um, you wanna do it. Okay, it doesn't work. I want it to be like that so you can read it. Okay, um, well that didn't work, so that's fine. <laughs> it's not for today's stream. The next thing I wanted to do, guys, is go ahead and create a, a enemy type that is a derivative of the walker that we just killed, but I want it to run, okay? I also want it to hold a shotgun, and he's really just gonna point it at you. He's not gonna like do this and then aim and then this and then aim. He's just gonna sort of pivot around and always face you and just shoot, 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 okay? Nothing crazy here. We're not making some crazy AI. We're making, what is it called? An indie game. We're making an indie game so we don't have the budget. What the heck is happening? We don't have the, let's hit play. <laughs> we don't have the budget of, man, I should know this. Whoever made Bioshock. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the budget, right? So we need to make sure that we're being careful with how many features we're adding. But I do know for certain, it's I think it's the reflection probes that are doing this. It's just weird. Although I will say, 
Did I turn on something? I don't know. <clears throat> but what we're going to do is we're going to take this enemy type, okay? This is our walker. We're going to rename him walker with gun. Okay? I know right off the bat, I want him to be a variant. I said derivative earlier. Variant is the right word. A prefab variant of the walker. Okay? So it's walker with gun variant. Or how about just walker shooter? So this is like uh, pretty much pivotal to any, any, any of your careers. If you're making a game, start with the core and the basics. Everything should start in the abstract first, okay? Think of it like a lens. As you're making your game, it's gonna be blurry at first, but you wanna just barely get the shapes. You barely get the shapes in. Okay, I think that's what it is. I think you're, you're twisting it. You're, you're bringing it more and more in focus, and then the details start to emerge. But it's all based on that core, okay, that abstract core. In this case, it's pretty much all of it is based on this one enemy. Everything is, even the, even the bosses are going to scale um, off of this enemy type, okay? So right off the bat, he should run if I tell him to. So we have a variable here. It never works whenever I, you know, don't do something for two, two weeks or don't utilize a variable for two weeks. It's always broken. <laughs> but let's go ahead and turn on runner and see what he does. Oh, and let's set his speed to, um, well, we'll set his speed here to, how about five, okay? His acceleration should be pretty big too, four. His angular speed should be a little bit higher, 300. His turning speed should be, and by turning speed, this is the speed that when he gets near you, that's what this speed is. It's kind of confusing, but this one's gonna be like 25. All right, let's hit play. There he is. Okay, good, he runs. So we're gonna change his animation to be a run with a gun. <coughs> good, okay, it works. I'm really, really happy. All right, let's go up to Mixamo.com. Does anybody know about Mixamo.com? If you want to impress your friends or your mom, just upload your uh, rig to Mixamo.com and you can't like, get a sign in. You mother effer, I was just here. Why do I need to sign in again? Um, but Mixamo has all these animations and as long as you rig your character properly, it'll work perfectly, all right? So let's just go ahead and find a run animation. Oftentimes you'll see plenty where they're just doing like a Naruto run or whatever you call it. Uh, but sometimes you can find it with the gun. There it is. That's the one we want. And we'll just click in place. There we go. There we go. The theory is, by the way, guys, all we're really downloading right now is the skeleton animation. Okay. We should be able to put a new mesh on this <coughs> and call it a day. All right. So if I have a new mesh, let's say a killer clown. Um, I should be able to drag that mesh onto this and it should work just fine, all right? But for now, we're just gonna download this animation here. And uh, there should be a shoot, and I don't really even wanna see a shoot animation. Do we think shotgun, do we wanna do shotgun or do we wanna do a pistol? <coughs> I don't think there's gonna be an animation. He's just gonna be like bang, 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 and a, and a projectile is gonna come out. All right, let's download that. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna put it in my downloads folder. Okay, I'm actually gonna just, yeah, let's just go ahead and copy it over to my <coughs> project folder for father. And we're gonna go to our art, not our animation folder, because our enemy animations are actually stored in the art folder. Um, Walker, animations, Mixamo scratch. I have all these files from Mixamo. I'm just gonna call it zombie run with gun. Okay, bring that in. And let's go ahead and set our animator. What we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna need to create a new animation controller. Not new animations, just a new animation controller. But more importantly, it's really an animation controller. Um, what do you call it? A Override, animator controller override, okay? So I'm gonna select this one. 
and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it Walker Shooter Animator Controller Override. All right. And all we want to do, ah, tsk, Thomas, delete that. We need to create a new animation override. All right. So that's what we're going to do. There it is. And we're going to call it Walker Run, <coughs> a Walker Shooter Animator Controller. All right. And we're going to drag in this one. <coughs> and now all we're going to do is replace the run, uh, the run animation with this new one. Okay. So we're going to go zombie run. All we're going to do is, this is the animation here called mixmo.com. I'm going to do control D. It's going to duplicate it. And I'm going to make sure I put it right nice and snug next, next to the other one and name it properly. Run with gun. All right. Now, uh, let's just drag in that run with gun in the run animation. Then all I got to do is just drag in our new override. So as you can see here, we have a pretty good system. Um, I don't think the override is actually anywhere in this script. It used to be, I think I, I moved it. Yeah, I did. All we gotta do is just drag it here, okay? Okay, so the theory is, the theory is, um, and also by the way, you need to make sure that script or that animation, well maybe not. There it is, run with gun, let's see it. Okay, it's not working. Let's hit play and double check. Okay, I don't think it knows where it is. So I, I think maybe what we have to do, man, this is hard, I forgot. Um, that's the only one that's getting overrun. Um, so do we have to include it here? Let's take a look. Nope, okay, but let's, let's, we're gonna figure this out. Usually this works just fine. Am I missing something here? Um, run with gun. That's not run with gun. That's not the run with gun animation. Let's see here. I think I may have done the wrong one. That is the wrong one. It's uh, run with gun. Okay, duplicate. Let's see. There it is. Okay, so we're going to duplicate it. We're going to call this uh, run with gun. And the theory is it should work now. Let's double check here. Um, run with gun, drag it in to the run animation. Walker, run with gun. Yes, okay, there he is. And it will loop, it should loop. Um, I don't think I need that there. Run with gun, loop time, good. Let's hit play. There he is. So we need to make his turn speed much bigger. Look at his animation speed. We need to slow his animation speed down. Okay, so I actually don't think I want him to... Let's double check something here. I'm gonna make sure I apply all these changes to, let's make sure we're gonna apply them to the right one. Yep, Walker Shooter variant, good. I'm gonna hit apply all. And um, I think, um, I wanna double check something here. So let's go to our other shooter enemy. This is called the flyer. Now it's not actually flying, is it? It's just a um, enemy type that can pretty much just go up on much taller surfaces. And he has an offset value, so he's always floating. So there he is. Is he always facing me? He's always facing me. reason he can't shoot me, I don't know why. He's not even following me. Okay, there's a reason. The reason why is I don't think we have his nav mesh surface baked. Okay, we don't have a nav mesh surface for our flyer. So we're gonna create a new empty game object, call this nav mesh surface. We're gonna create a new one called nav mesh surface. There it is. <clears throat> it's for the flyer and um, yeah we gotta do is bake so it should show up here looks like we can't step height should be less than come on 
There it is. Okay, let's hit play and hopefully he'll follow. There he is. Come on. So we have a problem. First off, we have errors because this spider down here. So we're gonna delete him. Let's double check and see what's going on. Unassigned reference. The variable enemy default has not been assigned to the graphic of the flyer. Isn't that strange? I don't know why. Um, so that is in the enemy default script. The variable enemy default has not been assigned. So we lost a reference, which sucks. Um, double click that and take a look. So this is the animator. Okay, so we need to say if animator exists and yeah, I think that's it. Let's try again. Hi, Danny. How are you, buddy? All right, let's hit play again. See what's going on. There he is. Okay, I win again. So he always faces me. Now we gotta, we gotta wonder, how is that possible, right? And I think he has a script attached. Hmm. Ah, yes, okay, so he behaves a little bit differently because it's actually a different object other than the AI agent himself that's rotating. Um, so that's a problem. I, I'm curious though, we'll, we'll try a couple things here, all right? <clears throat> the first thing I, I wanna do though is go to our walker with gun and let's just get him to, to shoot, all right? That's the first thing, let's just get him to shoot. Um, so what in the world? No, we're good. All right. <clears throat> so he, he does shoot, shoot projectiles, projectile speed. That value is, is, is not even a real value. I, I should delete that value. That value doesn't even do anything. Um, so the projectile is the, um, we're going to just do projectile default for the flyer for now. Um, let me search it in here. For some reason, it doesn't show up in the, in the, uh, yeah, yeah. So projectile flyer, we're going to drag that in. Oh, that shoot particles. How do I specify which projectile it shoots? There it is. Okay, it already exists, that's good. Right there. Um, the gun projectile spawn point is here. That's not good. So we want it to be inside of his hands. Um, so I could put it up here. Oh crap, that sucks. We need to go into the parent one and move it to his, like his right hand. Okay, that way in the in the shooter variant, it's right here. We're gonna make sure its position is zeroed out. Zero, 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 and we're gonna set it to one, one, one. That way it just comes out of the tips of his fingers for now. Okay, uh, let's try it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so he's not shooting. Okay, so let's, let's double check and see why. There's a couple reasons. I think the first one is attack delay, good. Attack proximity, hmm. Attack radius should be something like 10. So if you're in this vicinity, he'll shoot you. Now I will double check the flyer here. The flyer's vicinity for shooting is three, hmm. Hmm. Attack delay is one. That's weird. He should always shoot. So why is it not? It could be a null reference exception. Um, so let's go ahead and jump to our shoot. Blood particles die variant. Okay, there are no shoot particles. Are there? No, there are. So let's go to our actual enemy here. 
I'm, I'm checking with the with the flyer because the flyer works and I'm just trying to figure out where is okay shoot particles okay shoot smoke good and that's the projectile spawn point okay <coughs> let's and also let's just double check and see when we hit play if there's any null reference exceptions all right there's our projectile shoot smoke right there good if I hit play nothing happens that's okay and then let's just drag in that new projectile uh, shoot particles so that could be that could be the problem um, not sure though just want to be sure I've got everything here projectile spawn point gun model good good um okay <laughs> Just shooting at me, bud. Okay, we have maybe a null. Hopefully, we have a null reference exception somewhere. Nope, we don't. All right, let's go into our script and actually dig around and see what's going on. Um, so, the shooting is handled here. Shoot particles. If attack timeout is greater than attack delay, okay. Um, good. Let's see here. Shoot projectiles. Okay. If attacked, okay, blah, blah, blah. Enemy sight right cat senses player. Ah, yes. Okay, so it has to do with the senses. Um, so, ugh. I, I think we need to go to the flyer here and double check the senses. Okay, so they have ears and eyes. There's one. There's another. His ears, his eyes. They're set to pretty high, 60 and 40. 60 and 40. So maybe that's what it is. Let's go to our walker here. Let's look at his ears and eyes. So that's set to 60. That's set to 60 as well, so pretty big. Um, man. Let's do a little debug.log. trying to shoot if it's not getting to this point then something's going on right here okay hmm or it's colliding or the the projectile is just colliding with itself maybe <laughs> It's like he's not even trying. I didn't think I was gonna run into this problem. You should be shooting at me. Okay, so he's not shooting at me. Why? Attack timeout is greater than attack delay. So let's take a look at attack delay. Attack delay is set to two. Okay. Um, that's fine. The flyers is set to one. Um, uses hurt box. No, shoot projectiles one, one, one. Maybe it's the projectile speed. I don't know. Um, no, that's set up. All right. Don't know. We've got to figure this out. Let's just go through all of these. Trying to shoot. Attack timeout is greater than delay. So all I do is just put debugs in each condition. And you just see if it, which one's where it's getting locked up. I'm following the player. My distance is greater than attack radius. And then one more condition. Um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit those. If we hit those, we're good. <clears throat> is melee interfering with it? Maybe it could be. 
Okay, so it's getting to attack timeout greater than delay. And it's working, it's just not shooting. Okay, so we're getting to here. It's getting right there, but it's not getting here. That's because enemy sight raycaster is not defined. That's why. So we need to define enemy sight raycaster. That's what it is. So that right there is just classic debug, right there, guys. Bang. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. All right, very good. So now what we want to do is we want the gun model to point to the player. Um, so really what we want is we want his upper torso to always point to the player, which is, I have a feeling it's going to look terrible. I would much rather him just always face the player, but let's just try this first. So we're going to go to the gun model, which is going to be his spot. Wow, but then he won't rotate properly. We really need him to always face the player. That's what we need. <clears throat> okay. Now I have this always face player when following. It just doesn't work. So this right here, this tick, it should <coughs> it should work, but it doesn't. Um, he also just turns very slow. Uh, so let's let's double check and see why that's not working. Always face player when following. I don't use it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I wish his turn speed was just faster. Like, that's all we got to do. Well, no. Always face player when following. Okay. So we have rotation, and it's handled by the agent. That's the trouble, is I don't know how to turn that off. Disable. Disable nav mesh agent from turning and see what we get. Set angular speed to zero. Okay. We can try it. All right. So we're going to set the angular speed to zero for our agent angular speed is zero so th in this case the theory is he should just always can you jump let's see come jump good okay, good so now let's go ahead and figure out how to get him to rotate um so the question is now we have a script that runs in the update called rotate me. If rotation is handled by ground fitter, that doesn't exist anymore, so we'll delete that. If he's jumping, don't rotate. Otherwise, always rotate me. The question is, he's not rotating me, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, Let's just do a little debug.log inside the rotate. Target position. Ah, yes. So his current target position, I'm going to do this. Debug.log. His current target position is just himself, I think. Um, let's double check something here. No, 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 no. That's not true. Uh, man, I'm confused. If we're attacking or we're jumping, then quickly, quickly face the player. So let's double check something here. If he's near me, he should face me. Nope, he doesn't. Wow. Guys, I don't know.
That's weird. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to just get him to face the player at all times. Is it? <sighs> I want him to face the player at all times. And, he, and if I set angular speed to like 9,999, he'll just like really quickly rotate. Look, he's not. He's super slow. Look at that. It, there's like a weird... I can't figure this out. There's I've had this problem for like a year. What is turn speed? <laughs> I don't know what turn speed is. Look, he's super slow at turning. What in the world? Yeah, I bet you I know what it is. Well, maybe not. Oh, sorry, it's super loud, guys. I didn't realize. Acceleration, 1,000. Okay, it's his acceleration. I think that's great, honestly. Look, he doesn't face the player when I'm near him. Oh boy, that's not good. Now we need to go to our other walker. I wanna make sure that this one still works. This one should always face the player. This one should always face the player when he's near me. Crap. That's not good. What did we do to f screw that up? What did we do? Let's go back in time. That's crazy. Something broke. I want him to always face the player. That sucks, man. When he's near the player. There he goes. Okay, so we did something. So what did we do? <laughs> Let's go forward in time now. Um, we got all these weird debugs that we wrote. We had a bunch of debugs. Man, this is frustrating. Um, so something happened where it broke. Let's try again. Thomas is uh, Abdullah says that you have it updating only if it's jumping. You have it. You have to say is not jump. No, that's a or. So if it's attacking, or it's jumping, then do this. Otherwise, just do this. So let's double check something here. Okay, so something that I did in the script. So we're gonna go back in time slowly. I did something. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, it's this right here. It's this one. That's the one. So you, you are right, Abdul, or whatever. Uh, what was your name, Abdul? Um, you are correct. Very, very good. Thank you so much. So it looks like, it looks like, uh, he should only rotate. Yeah, we don't even need this condition. We don't need that condition at all. We just need rotate me to happen all the time. 
because the conditions are inside the rotate me. All right, let's try that. Um, but I will say, yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Let's hit play. All right, by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember there are maybe just probably one <laughs> one coupon code left if you want to join my massive program. It's going to teach you how to do what I do, okay? Um, be sure to check that out below. 50% off, plus you're going to get three bonus courses. Totally free, but only, only with these coupon codes. So be sure to check it out. What happened? Attack me. All right, good. So he works. Now the question is, the shooter, does he work? Uh, so let's disable the other walker and just try this guy. There he is. Okay, he's super slow. All right, so now we need to increase his acceleration, I believe. Because uh, weirdly enough, the nav mesh agent's acceleration is directly linked um, to his angular speed, which is pretty annoying, actually. Um, but let's take a look. If I set it to 150, what happens? Okay. And weirdly enough, it's linked here. Oh my word, 999. So what the heck is going on? That's 999. Oh, I'm so confused. Uh, maybe it's the, it has to do with the target. Woo! This is the one part of my script that I cannot figure out. It's something, it's just a mess. That's crazy. That works. Okay. It's not terrible. Okay, so I think what we need to do is we need to set the, look at that, the angular speed is like freaking high. If I set it to 999, you wonder what would happen. Hopefully it should be perfect. Just turn towards me faster, please. Yeah, I think what he's doing is he's just turning in the direction. He's just turning in the direction that he's moving. Not He's not trying to face me. That's the problem. Um, what we need to do is we need to go to the run animation. And we need to make sure that his torso is not doing anything. So this here, um, which is spine one, that's what we want to rotate towards the player, okay? So if we delete the spine one's rotation here, the theory is it shouldn't make much of a difference. Okay, it doesn't. Now, spine zero, zero, 001, we're going to try and get it <laughs> to face the player, all right? So let's do that. Spine 001 is the gun, the, the gun model. Um, what that means is the gun model will point to the player. We'll see, man. Nope. I wonder why. If I try and rotate it in game, what happens? That's Spine 001. Okay, that rotates his legs. 
Maybe it needs to be spine 002. I, I don't know. What is going on? <sighs> We're going to figure it out, guys. We will figure it out. Gun model. So, look, it should be lurping towards... The, the character controller um, but it's not uh, I don't know why let's just see if it's even trying debug.log I'm trying to face the player and we'll see okay I'm trying to face the player. Okay, so it's trying. That's because <laughs> I think Spine 02 has an animation. It does. There it is. Delete that. <laughs> Let's try that. Okay. So if I rotate him, look, this is what should be happening. And I can do it because I don't have any keyframes on it. That's the theory. But for some reason... It's just not doing it. Hmm. Well, guys, what are you supposed to do, huh? <coughs> Spino 2 and Spino 1. I'm trying to put those back. Cause he looked kind of weird running. I really just want him to always face the player. You know, that's what I want. I want him to always face the player. No matter where he is, always face the player. It's just, he won't. I have a variable in the script that overrides turn speed to 20. Yeah, that's down here. Oh, no. This right here. Yeah, but that's only if it jumps, but then it goes back to its original turn speed, right? So if I go debug.log, my turn speed is now, that's only when he jumps, is now turn speed a ridge. So it should be setting it back to the original turn speed. But we'll double check, we'll double check. Renato, thank you, that means a lot to me. Okay, yeah, he's setting his turn speed back to 999. I just want him to always face the player. Okay, that's what I want. Hey, I think I know what it is. It's the target. Oh, Thomas, you moron. It's the, it's the target position, you stupid idiot. Look, um, the target position is being set here. Okay, look, 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 here it is. If I'm following the player, the target position is the player. Uh, okay. No, that's not it. For some reason, he will not rotate towards the player. What he's doing is he's rotating towards his destination, but not towards the player. How do you fix that? <coughs> Does any, let's, let's do a Google search here. Let's help me out here. <laughs> um, how do I make it so that the rotation 
of an agent is not handled by the agent itself, but rather it's handled by the script. And what's weird is it was about a month or two ago, it was, it was handled by this script, but something happened where it started getting handled by the agent. Enemy look at player. Yeah. I am curious what is happening. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see here. Target position equals agent dot transform dot position. So that's never been this is this is the one that's getting fired right here at all times. Debug.log. Let's delete all of our debugs because we know those work. So it shoots now, so we can remove these. <clears throat> For some reason, it's the agent is handling the rotation and not the play, the, the enemy. Call update rotation on the nav mesh agent. Is that it? I don't think that's it. Try something like this. Transform, look at player. No. Thomas, you used a position end somewhere? What? Yeah, go to the, so you said go to the part that handles the rotation. This is what handles the rotation. Um, let's double check something here. Let's figure out what our target position is. Okay, this is this is a real good question. Debug.log uh, target position is currently. Wait, 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 wait. Transfer duration. Uh, it's the target is target. <coughs> huh. plus agent dot transform dot forward. Well, let's first see what our target position is. Our target position is currently um, this, okay? But I wanna compare it to, um, our player position, okay? Let's compare them, and cause they should be the same, right? They should be absolutely the same. Controller dot transform dot position. If they're not the same, then we have a problem. The controller is, um, yeah, that's the question, Tipsy Monkey. You said, is nav mesh agent turn speed overriding rotate me? And I think it is. And I don't know why. Like, I don't know how to turn it off. I made a mistake, update rotation isn't function, it is a bool. And that will tell the, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's hit play here and just look at our, our uh, debug. They're not the same. They're not the same. Look, they're not the same. They're not the same. Got it. Okay, so here, I think it's right. Um, why? <laughs> why are they not the same? Okay, this, this isn't getting fired at all. None of this is getting fired. It's this right here. And I could tell you it's right here. It's not the same. And I don't even think they're close. So I think, I think it has to do with the target position. Um, it's, it's like, oh, what is it doing? They should be identical. Okay. Look, they're not the same. That's crazy.
Is it targeting itself or the player? That's a good question. Let's let's see here. Target position and then let this this other one we're going to say enemy. Let's do two debugs. This is enemy. And let's do transform.position. I have a theory that the target position is itself. That's what I thought. That's what I'm saying, Ellie. I thought that that's what I was doing, but I don't think it is. I think the target position. Okay, so they're equal, generally. They're generally equal. So it looks like the target position is itself, which is an odd thing, isn't it? I don't know why. So let's double check something here, okay, guys? Target position equals what? Is it happening here? This is what I'm thinking is happening. It's being set right there. Because this is fine. What? That's crazy, guys. Let's let's do a little debugging. debug.log I'm setting the target position here. The question is is this occurring right here? Wait, look, look. There's no else here. Ha! There is no else there. That was the problem. That's my theory. Let's take a look. There's no freaking else. So it was just setting it. Constantly setting it. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Good, okay. Now, here's the thing. I, only, I want him to always face the player, but I don't want the walker. Thank you, Lord. I don't want the walker, the regular walker, to, to behave in such a way. So let's double check that the walker is not screwed up now, okay? So if I go over here, he should be rotating. Okay, whoa, you scared me, okay. Okay, so he's still facing me, therefore, therefore, um, this should only occur if always facing player is false. Same here. But if it's true, then it's going to be itself. Okay? I think that's how, how we should do this. Let's double check. So he should now face his path. Crap. Um, it's this one here. Look, look, look. Um, <coughs> it's doing this one here or this one. It, it, let's double check something here. There's a lot of conditions that I'm, I'm looking at here. This, I know we don't want to worry about anymore. So we're going to delete that debug. We're so close, guys. We're so close. And this is going to solve a lot of problems, actually. Um, it needs to be the opposite. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Ah, uh, it needs to be the opposite, doesn't it? If always face a player when following this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. 
You are correct. Um, yes, you are correct. Ah, not necessarily. We don't need that in there. We always want that to happen. Um, well, blech, what am I saying? Mm, so close, so close. So this basically just says, if he's not attacking, if he's not hitting, if he's not jumping, then the target position should be the player, right? Um, but if we always want the player, what am I saying? I'm so close. Let's double check something down here in the rotate me functions. We're so close, guys. There's a point when I'm looking at all of these conditions that I just start losing my brain. I can't, I, I can't figure it out. Um, okay, so if I'm, if I'm not attacking and I'm just walking, if I'm just walking, right, and I'm not doing any of this other stuff here, then the target position should be the player. Uh, I don't agree. Um, I don't agree. I don't agree. Wow. The target position should be the agent. Huh. I feel like we need to put this in the condition down below. So close, guys, so close. So down in the rotate me section, basically what we need to do is we need to put this the condition here. If always face player when following, target equals uh, the controller. Okay. Otherwise, else the target's gonna equal the target position, right? Which is yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we don't even need an else there. So I believe we should be good here. So basically what that says is if I'm always going to face the player, then the target's always going to be this. That's, that's what I think it's going to do. Samuel, you said, what are we doing? I don't even know. I've kind of lost my train of thought here. Stop looking at me. Yeah, stop looking at me, buddy. Is that set to true? Okay, so we need, I, man, I hate this, but I feel like we need to flip these. We need to flip these. So look, if I'm just walking, right? If I'm just walking around, then my target position should be, um, ugh. This is the problem. Target position also has to do with where I'm going, right? It has to do with the navigation. So that's fine. Um, basically this just means if I'm attacking, look, all this does is it says, if I'm not attacking, move towards the player. But if I am attacking, then I want to move, I want to stop. I'm going to stop. That's what this does. Okay? So it just he just stops. So that, like if I hit play here and shoot him, it stops him. See, that's what that's for. So that's what that's for. So this is all good. We need to go down here though, and it looks like the rotation that's occurring, rotate me, uh, oh 
man. Else, the target needs to equal the destination point. Um, that's really what we should be doing here. It should equal the destination point, not the player. Um, or, Rotate Ugh, my brain. Okay, I done this. Because rotate me doesn't have a condition. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that's what it is. So rotate me does need a condition, um, which should be yep. Okay, so we have this rotate me function, and it's being fired. So it needs a condition. We only rotate ourselves. We only rotate this if always rotate when player is following um, or we're attacking um, that's another problem we'll talk about that in a sec Good. Okay. So that works, but now when I'm near him, he doesn't rotate towards me, right? So basically what we need to do is we need to say, or, this is so ugly, ugh, or um, we're attacking. Or we're attacking, right? Um, that's about it. That's about it. Um, I think we fixed it. I, I'm worried that this is going to affect the jumping. That's that's the problem. Is um, yeah, I'm I'm worried about the jumping. And by the way, guys, those who are just joining us, just remember that full time game dev, which is my massive program, is going to take you two months to learn, two months long. Tons of content. You're going to learn everything I know about starting a game studio, finding funding because I've done it multiple times, six figures in funding, uh, with just a demo. If you want to take advantage of that coupon code below, be sure to click below. I think there's one code left. You can get a free t-shirt as well. Three free programs on top of that. It is a premium program. 3,000 students worldwide. Great reviews. And if you're a student, let us know in the chat. Jump. Okay, so his rotation sucks. Well, that's fine. Okay, what about this? Okay, he's rotating. Good. Okay, now let's test the shooter. The shooter should, if we, um, whew, this is a real pain in the butt. If we turn on our shooter here and then we set him to always rotate, always face player, he should always face me. Good. Awesome. That works. Now, the next question is jumping. Okay. I'll say this. My theory is we have this right here, this little script here, and it says, if I'm jumping, um, 
I should turn towards, um, ah, yes. Okay. Okay. So the theory, I, I think, um, all we got to do is stick it up here. Really, honestly, the condition should be up here. I got it. I got it. This is kind of gross, but just bear with me. Rotate me. So the rotate me is going to, um, yeah. Or we're jumping. If we're jumping, we also want him to rotate, uh, to force a rotate, to, to rotate towards um, this destination point, which is right here. So we want it to rotate towards his destination. So if he's jumping, I don't want him rotating towards the player. That's ridiculous. I want him to rotate towards the direction that he's jumping, right? <coughs> so let's see if we can fix that. Nope. Okay, let's try the other walker. I don't want to be getting shot while I'm testing this. <sighs> that kind of worked. Come on, bud. He kind of did it. Um, let's set his turn speed to 9,999. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah. Is the target being set somewhere? No. Bless me. Come on, bud. Okay, okay. That works. Come on, bud. Please work. Ugh, sometimes it doesn't work. He's going to jump down right here. It looks all right. Let's try it over here. Come on down, bud. Okay, it seems like it's working. Yeah. Okay, guys. So it looks like everything's working fine. I want to double check though that it works for the spiders as well. Um, so let's try the spiders. Good. Hey, good. That's great. It works. Awesome. Hey, I feel pretty good, guys. Um, so we're going to disable that. Let's go back to our walker with gun. Um, we're going to increase his shoot rate. This guy's going to be brutal. Um, I don't want him to move as fast as he is. Well, I don't mind him running. Um, and... I think that he needs to shoot a little bit faster. So we'll do attack delay. We'll set it to 0.5 and hit play. Okay. 
good. His run speed is ridiculous. Uh, he's way too fast. So we can just scale that. We can just do this. Actually, I will say, his animator is correlated to his move speed or his move speed multiplier. Let's double check. Looks like the animator speed is, ah, okay, it's just the random speed multiplier. So <clears throat> yeah, so we need to just scale his run speed. You can see here, it's pretty fast. Look at that. So I'm just gonna slow it down, maybe double it. Now let's hit play. And I don't want him to be able to shoot if he's jumping. Look at that. It's already looking way better. <coughs> okay, so let's let's make sure we remove that. Um, so if we the the ability to shoot while he's jumping, right? So that's actually going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to say, look, if we're jumping uh, or attacking even or getting hit even, don't let us shoot, right? Um, which this is gonna be really ugly. Let's just do the jump for now. I, I kinda like the idea of him being able to whack you with his gun if you're close, so that's pretty cool that it already works. Um, so this right here, we're gonna just say, if attack timeout is greater than attack delay, um, and we're not jumping, right? So, but we need to say, and animator exists, and animator, dot current animation is not jump then we can shoot all day long doesn't matter right all righty there we go good So I feel like there should be some kind of, hey, I, I feel like this is what we need to do. When we go to jump, we need to set attack timeout back to zero, right? So if he jumps, set the attack timeout to zero. So we're gonna go to our <coughs> agent link mover here. And you can see here, we, we're using this one here. What we gotta do is just go to enemy default dot attack timeout equals zero, right? or even give us like a little bit of room to just breathe. So maybe negative one. Um, we'll do the same for the parabola. This enemy link mover, this agent link mover is what basically allows him to jump to another nav mesh, okay? <clears throat> Let's go to attack timeout here. Yep, yep, yep. And it looks like it's, uh, it needs to be set to public. So let's go to attack timeout in the enemy. It's right here. So it's a private float. So we'll just make it public, but we'll hide it in the inspector so we're not freaking out. Yeah, one of you said, Thomas, there's like a billion nested if then statements. Correct. There are a lot of a lot of nested if then statements. First thing is is it's only with the enemy class that it's this bad. But secondly, I will say, this is just how my games are. And they end up getting released. <laughs> so <laughs> they're fine, they'll be all right. But you're right, it is bad code. It is bad code. Jump, start shooting again, good. I feel like his move speed's a little too high. And also, by the way, guys, you know, if we set the move speed to be a little bit lower, to maybe four, 
And then we also set the agent link mover speed multiplier, this value right here, to just one. <coughs> It'll look a bit better, the jumping. Because it looks a little bit, uh, there we go, look at that. That's great, that looks awesome, honestly. <coughs> well, he obviously needs a gun, doesn't he? So let's give him a gun. Um, I'm pretty sure I want him to just have a shotgun. And fortunately, we do already have a shotgun. But what I want to make sure to do here is we have this run with gun animation. Now you notice that his hands are like all over the place. See that? So I'm actually going to take this, <coughs> and that's the hand R. And I'm going to fix it. It's rotation. I don't want all these values here, so we're just going to delete. Okay. And then just move it forward. I don't know why he's red. That's that's the thing. I have no idea. Um, but we could do something like this. Yeah. So let's just rotate it to be about like that. Looks pretty good. Rotate it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then this right here, the other one, which is right there, that is hand left. We're going to delete those values. And we're just going to rotate it a little bit better. Look how long they are. Yeah, I'll probably need to remesh just the, the enemies that can shoot. I have a theory that I can just shrink the hands. I don't want to do that, but I feel like we can do that. Okay, let's see how that looks in the animation. It looks good. <clears throat> All right, guys. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's not bad. Looks good, doesn't it? Hey. I'm really enjoying this. I surprised it, it's going so well, you know. Um, <clears throat> all right. Stick guy says if you write good code, it will actually make faster in future projects. That's correct. But if you're a dummy like me, you can't write good code, can you? Uh, it's just not something that is in my wheelhouse. Um, but I, I, you're right. You're, you're right. I won't argue with you there. All right, guys, let's add a gun. You want to? Let's add a little shotgun. So we have a shotgun right here and it's got some hands attached to it. So we'll remove that. Um, we'll put it inside this gun here. <coughs> We're going to do 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. We're going to rotate it and just get it lined up pretty good here. And it's unlikely we'll be able to even see it that well anyway. That's my excuse. Um, so we'll just put it right here. We could probably get away with 0.55. There we go. And we'll disable <coughs> the arms. Okay, so there's his shotgun. Um, just probably position it just a little bit better. There we go. About like there. The shoot smoke will be inside of the shotgun. I'm going to zero out everything. One, one, one. And we're just going to move it down. I don't know what. Does anybody know why it's red? I would love to know. <laughs> I would love to know. And that's the shoot smoke right there. Um, I feel like we need to put that. Yeah, that's good. But also the shoot point. I can't remember where that is. I would say, okay, there's shoot smoke. So what I want to do is just drag shoot smoke to the shoot point. Because there's a point at which the prefab is being shot out. So it's the projectile spawn point. I'm going to make it the shoot smoke. 
There we go. All righty. So there's his gun. He's got a beautiful shotgun. Let's hit play. Looks terrible. <laughs> so first off, <laughs> Thomas, um, this uh, shotgun here needs to be just default. It's showing up weird. And obviously you'd, you'd probably want the shotgun to be um, sort of positioned like this, right? But it's not even facing the player. That's the problem. <clears throat> Doesn't look terrible. I wonder if I can do some positioning right now and get it perfect. Okay, so he's trying to attack me. Okay. So I'm facing, he's facing the player. The shotgun is not. So what we want to do is take the shotgun itself. There we go. And position it so it's facing the player, right? <clears throat> Just like this. Maybe position it up a little bit. I know it's not proper. He's holding it like an, he's holding it like a moron. Um, we just want it facing the player. Okay, let's take all those values, copy them, and then paste them. Crap, I did the wrong one. Okay, now here we go again. It's actually the shotgun that we want to position here, not the, the gun itself. Okay, we'll just rotate it. I'm just gonna get, let's, let's change this it to the center point here. That, that's gonna be much easier. Okay, and we want it to face the player because the enemy is facing the player, right? Remember the enemy is facing the player perfectly? So we want it just like this. Maybe we could probably move it forward a little bit. Almost, guys, almost. Put it in his hands. Yeah. Okay. Ah, wrong one. Nope, right one. That's the right one. Okay. I feel like it should be positioned a little bit closer towards the player, like this. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to copy all those values, paste them, hit play, and take a look. We'll move his hands a little bit closer. Okay, so he shouldn't be able to shoot while he's attacking. That's that's another rule. Let's see where the gun is. Okay. Cool. And it's also got an animation on it. That's not good. <laughs> Look at this. We've got all these different scripts on there too. We don't want that. Let's remove all those. Animation, all this stuff. We don't need any of that. We don't even need this. Okay. I'll unpack this if I want. Um, but we won't do that just yet. Gun tip, gunshot particles, delete that. All right. So that looks fine. Then what we want to do is make sure that we go to our... <laughs> Um, I have a theory actually. I feel like it should look good like this by default. And then we move the arms 
right? We, we're going to move the arms instead to position those to work, okay? That's really what we should be doing. The arms should be pointing towards the player, and they're currently not. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure it looks good when he's just standing there, right? Um, sort of holding it in his hand like that. So let's just see that it looks good when he's standing or jumping. Come on up, bud. Looks good when he jumps. Great. So now we just need to position his arms. That's really what we need to do. And honestly, we could rotate the the, the gun itself inside the uh, the run with gun. Okay. So there's the gun. So what we want to do is actually just take the gun itself and rotate it in that animation. That's the theory. That's the theory. All right, let's just see if that works. It doesn't look bad. Okay. I think it looks fine. Cool. Hey, it works for me. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to change the, the bullet effects really quick, okay, guys? We need a new projectile. So that, that projectile isn't the one we want. We want a just a rifle for now. Um, so th that's what we're going to do. Um, we can go to our projectile. And it's our projectile for our flyer. We're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate it. Call it projectile walker. And we're not gonna name it shotgun because, well, I don't even know if I want it to be a shotgun. We're just gonna test it out. Shoot speed's gonna be much faster, right? So move speed of like fifty. Turn speed of zero. Um, <coughs> The shoot sound, do we have a shoot sound? Yep, there it is. We're just gonna make it a shotgun uh, or a trench gun is what it was. Hmm. Shot. What's my shotgun sound? <clears throat> I think that's fine. Uh, we don't want an electricity sound. We could make it pretty low, actually. We could do like 0.2, so it would just be a whoa sound when it passes you. That's fine. That's projectile walker. I'm gonna make it. Uh, we're not gonna have an electricity sphere here. We're just gonna have the bullet itself, and it's gonna be something like two by two by two. With a trail render, of course. Uh, I believe we have a trail render on the. Let's see here. We have smoke. Good. I think that's fine. <clears throat> let's double check. Let's insert it into our slot. This is our new projectile. I'm going to just drag it in there. Um, projectile walker. All right. You guys ready to test it out? Let's make sure we hit apply here to our prefab with all these changes. Cool. I love it. Yeah, that bullet, watch this. All we gotta do for the bullet is uh it needs to be smaller 
<clears throat> you want to be able to see it, right? But not really. With a shotgun bullet, you just want to see a trail, honestly. So I'm going to make the trail much longer. Um, so we're going to go to projectile walker here. Let's make the electricity sphere like one by one by one. Tiny little thing with a trail renderer a pretty bright, pretty bright, and then long. So like 0.8, that should do it. Um, so if I move the around like that, that's what it looks like. So we want to make the trail renderer not so tall or wide. Um, so something like this. So that's our bullet. Cool. Yep. All right, let's take a look. So he shouldn't be able to shoot when he's getting attacked. That's ridiculous. Um, I feel like we need to create a new script um, that basically says if if I'm running, I can shoot. If I'm if I'm running or standing, I can shoot, but that's it. You know, this is ridiculous. We need to invert this. This is ridiculous. It just needs to be if I'm running, or if I'm. Yeah, that's all we got to do. So if run or walk, all these things are possible, right? Or idle. So it would be or, right? Or, or. So if these if these are available, if I'm running, walking, or I'm idle, then I can <coughs> follow the player and all that cool stuff. Um, good. The same is true here. I should only be able to shoot if I'm meeting certain conditions, right? I'm running or I'm walking, or I'm idle. If that's the case, if this works, by the way, we'll create a function that can just check that. I don't need to be repeating all this crap code. Um, or I'm idle. Do I need another one here? Yeah. All right, so and I'm running, or I'm walking, or I'm idle. Uh, if, he's, if he's getting hurt, if he's jumping, um, if he's, if he's attacking, he cannot shoot and he cannot move. That's the rule. <coughs> Ready, guys? I want to make sure those animation names are correct. Uh, idle, walking, or walk. OK, walk is good. I should really name that to walk. That's ridiculous. Let's hit play and take a look. Okay, it doesn't work. <sighs> walking? Is it walking and running? I don't know. Oh, man. But let's just do this really quick, guys. I'm going to create a function here. This is ridiculous. So for this right here, all this stuff here, <laughs> I'm just going to say, and um, meets animation criteria. I know that's an ugly name. I just can't think of a better one. OK. And it meets the animation criteria. Good. And this should meet the animation criteria. And then now we just got to create that function down here. Scroll on down. And then uh, private void meets animation criteria. There we go. Um, it's actually going to be a bull. And it's going to return if all of these are true. Then return all this crap. Return true, else return false. OK? That's, that's what we're trying to do here. We want to clean up this code and just say, look, if we're, gonna hit, if, we're not, if we're not doing any of these things, then we're good, right? We meet the animation criteria. 
this is kind of a weird function, so let's give us a comment here. Um, if any of the following animations are occurring, we can't do certain things like um, move or shoot. And we need to make sure we check that we have an animator. in that uh, function. We'll do that really quick. Okay? That's the theory. Let's take a look. If animator exists <laughs> and the following, right? All these following are true. Um, that's 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 kind of what we're going to do with this function here. So let's take a look and see if this works. Let's take a look. All right, what happens when you jump? Oh, he's moving. I don't like that. Why are you moving? It's all right. Why are you moving when you're attacking? What the heck? So it looks like there's an animation criteria that's not here. Why was it, why was one not included? Hmm. And attack, right? And the attack animation is not occurring, right? Uh, then return true. I, I mean, I don't know why it wasn't in there, but it's not. Why are you shooting me while you're getting hurt? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so it doesn't work. Something's wrong. So we're going to go way back in time. Oh boy. Okay, I, I need it to work at least for the movement because I don't want to screw up the movement. Meaning when he gets shot, he needs to stop. Okay, so something's wrong here. Good, good. So he can still shoot. Okay, while he's attacking. Um, if he attacks, like he does a slash attack, we're gonna set that really quick. Yeah, right here. Um, we're gonna set this attack delay uh, to, or is it attack timeout? Yeah, we're gonna set attack timeout to a negative value so that we have some time to breathe before he shoots at you again right after you attack. That's one thing. Um, the same is true for getting hurt. Um, so the take damage. Taking damage. Uh, 
yeah, when he takes damage, uh, we should also set the attack timeout uh, value to negative one. That way he doesn't immediately start shooting you after you attack after you've hit him, right? That's ridiculous. All right. Almost done, guys. Feeling pretty good about it. Hit play. I love how he can shoot the glasses. That didn't work. Okay, then the next thing we want to do is um, he's not attacking. <clears throat> yeah, that's another idea. Let's just do it down here first. I want to make sure it works with crap code first. So we're gonna do, and he's not attacking, right? He's not attacking and he's not jumping. Um, <clears throat> then we should be good. So if he's not attacking, if he's not jumping, uh, he should be able to shoot. But we'll create we'll we'll create a boolean up up top. I know what you're saying. We'll create a boolean up top. I just want to make sure this works. So if you're attacking me, you can't shoot me. But he can while he just jumped there. That's ridiculous. <coughs> Seriously. <coughs> He should only be able to do it if the animation clip is is run. That's that's really the truth of it. He should only be able to shoot you when he's running, right? Um, so let's just <laughs> do that. I just want to make sure that the name is correct. Is that the right name? Run. Okay, let's double check. So he can only shoot me when he's running. Ah, that's not the name of the animation. That's not the name of the animation. The name of the animation is run with gun, right? Yes, I see you now. If I have an animator and Oh, but that's gonna cause problems. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna cause problems with the ghost. So what we wanna do, officially, <coughs> is create a Boolean up top here. And it's gonna be and um, the animation requirements met then up here we check animations to see if we can do certain things <clears throat> there it is so if all these are met then if I have an animator right and all of these are met, then our animation requirements are met. Animation requirements met equals true. Otherwise, it equals false.
it's going to be a private animation private boolean by default it's going to be false that's fine and now that should just solve our problem here all of these are our requirements right to be able to do certain things um so that's good right there so it's really clean now and it's not redundant so our animation requirements are met in this case right here we just say the same thing animation requirements are met right that should should work No. It's okay. The prefabs were saved. It's okay. By the way, guys, this video is sponsored by my own course, Full-Time Game Dev. The beauty of my course, guys, I have 3,000 students worldwide. There's one coupon code left for 50% off. The beauty of my course is that it teaches you how to start a studio even when you're a dummy like me. Even when you're somebody like me, I can still bring in six figures every year making indie games. And I teach you how to do it. I teach you the business side of it. There's a whole other money side of things that most indie game developers don't know about. I teach that. Um, by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat. You're also gonna get a free t-shirt. I'm gonna give you a shout out in my next stream. And you're gonna get three bonus courses dedicated to 2D art. There's a 3D course. And there's also a free course on um, how to secure streamers to play your game. It's a pretty awesome course. I really like it. I've been doing it. For, I've been selling this course for two years, so I can confidently say that people really do love the course. It really works. One of my students raised $170,000 on Kickstarter. It's pretty ridiculous. Look at this lighting. Gotta love it. Um, let's go ahead and <clears throat> hit play here. I believe we're okay, right? Yeah. Um, let's make sure I didn't lose any of these values in here. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm using URP. Good. So that generally worked. Um, let's take a look here. Awesome. All right. We'll delete his gun when he dies. There's no reason to show it. Not right now. And obviously, that's ridiculous, shooting that fast. So let's, let's slow that down. Um, attack delay. We can do one second. And what else? Wasn't there something? Oh, yeah. When he gets hit, when we take damage, we really want to set that attack that attack delay pretty low, like to negative two. Um, so it, him taking damage, I wanna make sure this is even happening because I thought we did it. Basically he's shooting, he's shooting, um, what? <clears throat> he's shooting like immediately after he gets shot and that's dumb. So we're gonna set it to negative two. Yeah, if you stand still, you're gonna get shot. Let's, I don't know why the attack delay isn't getting set. Let's double check, ready? Let's go down to attack delay here. Can we see it? Okay, we can. So it's currently set to, 
Ah, that's what it is. <laughs> we don't want to set attack timeout. Okay, so we want to be able to see attack timeout. So let's actually, uh, let's set this to serialized. I just want to see it in the inspector and observe what's going on. It should be setting to like negative two and it requires it to count all the way back up. But for some reason, it's not. Um, so let's just observe in the inspector what's going on here, okay? So we look at our attack timeout, it's right here. Let's watch the value, it should go to negative two when I shoot the enemy. It's not. All right, so it's not doing it for some reason. Um, isn't that weird? Ah, it's because it says can add blood splatter to camera. Uh, yep, duh, Thomas, you moron. Um, there we go. So we'll set it to negative one. I thought it was just not long enough, but it was because it wasn't meeting a condition. So we're good here. We're good here. All right, let's take a look here, guys. Good, okay, so he can't just fire at you. I really want him to point his gun at you. You know? Or like his chest or something. <coughs> like I wish he would maybe even just rotate this. Oh my. I think it's because of that animator. So that spine right there, it would be great if you could, uh, or no, this one here. It'd be great if he could rotate his body and face you, but he doesn't. And I don't know why. Spine 003, huh? Let's take a look. It should face the player. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, just to double check this here, guys, is I'm gonna go to run with gun and I wanna delete spine 003. All of those rotation values, I'm gonna delete. And then, the goal is, I want him to look at the player, and he's not. So let's let's just hit play here and double check something here. I'm gonna rotate him and just see if he reverts back. If he reverts back, look at that. Why? It, he reverts back. Isn't that crazy? Is it because, uh, I don't know. I don't know why he reverts back. It's a strange thing. I don't know why. But for some reason, if I rotate the gun model, it just snaps right back. Well, look. Wait, wait, wait. We go to run with gun. There's no spine 03 in here. So I don't know why it's rotating back. Isn't that strange? <clears throat> like if I, if I were to rotate him like this, he should remain twisted, but he's not. Look, his rotation is rotating. Look at that. That's spine 02, Thomas. Okay, let's try this. Spino 003, rotate. It reverts back to zero. Man, I don't know why. Does anybody know? I think it has to do with like this animation value, apply root motion. Yeah, I don't know. It, it might be this. Try setting the rotation and late update. Okay. We'll try it. So there's a gun value. 
uh, gun graphic. Uh, gun gra gun model, and this will point at the player. So that right there. We can try and put it in a late update. We'll see. Public late update. Bang. Let's try it out. <clears throat> we'll set this value. Is there an animation rigging layer? I don't think so. Um, so we want it to be spine 003. Let's go to our animator here and look at our layers. We just got a base layer. Um, so let's go to spine 003, walker. Um, and we're gonna drag that into the gun model slot and it should rotate it. So we'll see. Hey, that worked. Who said late update? Who was that? That's great. Thank you so much. So all we got to do now, guys, is we need some sort of rotation <sighs> offset value, which sucks. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Funky Sloth. That's awesome. Or uh, who was it? Obruka? It was Obruka. <laughs> it was Obruka thing. Obrooks. Thank you so, so much. So sadly, you know, we need to create a vector here. Uh, it's pretty frustrating. Um, and it's going to be called point, gun point offset, gun model uh, look at offset. And we're gonna set this value up here. Um, it's gonna be in a shooting. Public vector three gun model look offset. <clears throat> and we just need to set this <coughs> manually. Okay, let's set his spine back to. <coughs> what, which one did I rotate here? Look at that. There we go. All right. So. Yeah, I, I think it would be something like negative two. Okay, it'd be probably negative two in the X and then negative one in the Y. Negative two, negative one. Okay, that, that made it worse. Two and then one. Why? Why is it not working? Oh, no, I don't know. 20, 25. Okay, <laughs> it's working. He's just like, looks like an idiot. I don't know why. I have no idea what's happening actually. I don't know, guys. Oh, man, this sucks. How about we mute it? That's probably a good idea. We're gonna keep it at zero for now. Zero in the Y. He's an idiot, look at him. I, I am curious uh, what's going on here. Oh, 
That's not gonna work. It's not an offset value. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a left and a right issue. So Ugh. what we want to do is, yep, yep. Um, where am I? Okay. So we, we need to create some values, okay? Float offset x equals gun model look at offset dot x. Um, it, it, it needs to be the character controller, uh, game manager dot character or uh, player controller dot transform dot position, uh, transform dot write and then multiply times that value. Actually, yeah, that should do it. Why can't I do that? Ah, it's a vector. We need to be a vector. Hey, we're going to create a new vector. Um, it's going to be vector three offset. Um, there we go. So, offset lateral and then we'll have an offset vertical and this is going to be the y value so that really this is a multiplier is what it is um, <clears throat> yeah and then it's going to add those values so we're going to offset we're going to add the offset lateral and then the offset vertical um, if those are zero, we should be, it's like nice and clean. Uh, we're not gonna do any Z. There's no reason to do any Z um, or like forward. So let's let's take a look here. <laughs> this is so freaking complicated. Um, offset. I am losing steam, my friends. I'm losing steam. Okay, he should be perfect. Look, he's not though. What the heck? I guess it's just his rotation, that's fine. In the animation, that's the theory at least. Let's set it to negative two and then hit forward. Okay, okay, two. Okay, it's working. Three, four, uh, we'll do seven. And then y is two, no, negative two. Negative four, negative seven. Oh no, he's inverting. Okay, so he's inverting. It's all inverted. It's inverted for sure. So we need to just do inverted values, I guess. Uh, so this would be left. And then this would be down. I don't know. Um, psh, I have no idea. Okay, there he is. All right, let's uh, have him face the camera. You guys ready? <laughs> negative or positive two. I will do negative six and then negative six. This will be positive six. The real question is I just want to make sure he's just laterally it's working or uh, horizontally. Negative 10. Look at that, he's not even looking at me. It's inverting, it's inverted. Let's just do the lateral for now, Ugh, my word. Subtract it and then we're just gonna do, or that's, is lateral the same as vertical? I don't think it is. But let's just do the lateral for now. 
and see what we get. Uh, player transform. Ah, it's not the player controller. Thank you, Lord. It's it's the camera controller. The player camera controller. Or is it the Yeah yeah. Dot transform dot right. Okay, good. So the controller's not rotating. It's the it's the camera controller that's rotating. Okay. Um Okay, that should be good. And then we'll just add. We'll just add. And the thing I keep telling myself, guys, is it's not like we're wasting a bunch of time on dumb features. This is like pretty core to the game. So we do want to make sure that didn't work. Why? What? What? What are you looking at? Oh my word. What in the world? I, I don't know what he's looking at. Hmm. Oh, we're so close. Let's just double check something here. Let's just make sure he's, he's even pointing at the car the camera. Um, it looks like he is. I think I got it actually. I think I figured out what I want to do. I don't really like those values, that gun model offset value. We're going to delete those. I think we're just going to rotate his arms appropriately when he's shooting. Um, I think that's fine. So the gun model, uh, or when he's running, these values should be shifted left. So right now, all I'm gonna do is just this value here and then point it down. That's all I'm gonna do. We're just gonna start with that one. And I had this problem, by the way, guys. Oh my word. It, like it didn't even, oh, it's because I didn't animate it. Thomas, what are you doing? Um, I had this problem with pinstripe when I was working on pinstripe. Same thing. It's a pain in the butt. Um, hit record. And then this little fella here will rotate this way. And I think that'll do. Oh my word. What? Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> I'm seeing it. I can see it with my eyes. If we go to uh, run with gun three, look, it moves back. That's why. So that's what, <laughs> that's what's going on. Um, what is that? That is arm R. Rotation. We're going to delete that. And so that should help us out here. 
There we go. So maybe just a little bit to the left. But he does point at us, which is great. So a little bit to the left, <clears throat> or I guess right, depending on how you look at it. Um, we're almost there, guys. Good. All right. It works. Was I doing this one here? Yeah. Arm right. Good. So a little bit more to the right. We'll rotate it like this and point it up, maybe. And that should do. Let's take a look. OK, maybe bring it down a little bit. And then to the right. Down a little bit and to the right. You also want to make sure it's rotated nice and clean. So I like that. OK, let's take a look. A little bit down, I think. <clears throat> yeah, we'll just point it down a little bit. And then, now that we're good and we know we like it, we can actually position his other arm here, which is his upper arm L. Delete that. <clears throat> and just look at that. That's weird. Um, position it so that it matches. So I'm holding it like this. Yeah. So right arm is, yeah. So this one's longer. Good. Yeah. That'll do. And then this guy here, same thing. Right? Holding that shotgun, baby. Not the best way to do things, but it's working. Um, and then that should look good. Okay, his hand is all rotated up, so we'll fix that. <laughs> look at the way he attacks, though. It's like a chick. I like that. We'll, we'll have it so that it doesn't point if I'm attacking. Okay, we'll just move. Ah, yeah, it looks like we have an issue with the uh, the arm here. Look, it's moving back. Yeah, we don't want that. That's the arm L. <clears throat> so we'll delete all these. There we go. And that's hand L. Okay. Okay, we'll move that other arm a little bit to the to the right. It's a little weird looking. So we'll do this. And then this one will move for over here. Yeah, I like that. And then this. Just like that. Maybe? I don't know. What the heck is happening? Yeah, we just probably need to animate it. So as he runs, we just need to move his hand and his arm a little bit like that. <clears throat> I 
It's a really weird looking animation, isn't it? But it works. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my word. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking, like, how bad this looks. I feel like I just want to go back in time. That looks so much better. All right, so that one right there. Is the arm R? And we just want to get that back here. There we go. So he looks at me. I just think we need to be doing this a little bit differently. Hmm. OK. Well, guys, thanks for joining me today. That was really, really fun. Just remember, guys, you can get 50% off full-time game dev today. So today is Friday, so this is the last day that I'll be streaming this week. There's one coupon code left. Maybe not, but you can check. There's one coupon code left below to get all these three, bo three free bonus courses, 2DR Pro, Stream My Game, and Easy 3D, and also full-time game dev, which is a massive program on how to do what I do, which is make games full time. Uh, you get a free t-shirt as well. I have 3,000 students worldwide. And if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat. One coupon code left, guys. I will talk to you later. This was fun. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. <coughs> and also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too.